Here we're looking at Paul Gilbert's terrifying triplet technique, or hopefully not so terrifying by the end of the video. Um, this is an actual thing he does, there's an interview I saw with him, if I can remember it or if I can find it I'll put a link to it, but there's a chance I might not because it was a while ago I saw it. The interview was basically asking him how, how do you play so many notes and he was like, well you know me and Malms to me use a lot of tricks so it sounds like we're playing uh, more picking than we actually are and this is one of the tricks. Uh, the thing to do here, I'm, I'm just going to dive into it and I'll talk about the technique as we go on. There, there are other ways that you can play it, but I'm going to try and tackle it in the way that Paul Gilbert, or at least the way I think he would tackle playing it. So this first example here, this is kind of the this is the backbone of it. I'd suggest if this is weird for you or difficult, spend a bit of time getting this first one down because it'll make the rest of it a lot easier. Uh, so we're going 2-3-5 on the low E. Playing those down, up, down, right? And then we're doing a legato, just an upstroke, and hammer on two, three, five on the A string. So I'm going down, up, down, upstroke, legato, and it's all triplets here. So one, two, three, one, two, three. If you add a bit of palm mute into the A string, it's going to sound a bit more like it's picked. So if I play it all uh, with no palm mute at all, we get this kind of like. You can hear that's legato if I palm mute it. Sorry, that was really sloppy. I'll slow it down a bit. So really, the two techniques you're using here are this legato and a kind of uh, triplet thing. I was tensing up far too much there. Uh, what I'm doing with my hand, rather than moving it sideways, is you know Van Halen's weird tremolo picking. It's kind of more like that. What I'll do now is I'll switch angles and I'll show the picking technique a wee bit closer up. There are different ways to do this but I'm just going to go over the kind of uh, Paul Gilbert style approach. Uh, so a relatively thin-ish pick, I mean it's not got much give to it but it's a bit thinner than what I'd use, it's going to get a slightly closer tone to his uh, sound and it's going to be a little bit easier. I find using a thicker pick for this uh, way of playing this is quite difficult. So the main difference is instead of using like this pick the pick, you know like normally you kind of play through, sort of like that. Um, he'll tend to use this side of the pick. I uh, don't know if I showed that properly, sorry. He'll tend to use the, this side. And hold his hand, as I almost think of it like a fan, it's this kind of thing. Um, and using that kind of edge of the pick almost rather than the point. Uh, uh, that sort of thing. So the other way you could do this, just as a side note, is you could economy pick. So you could go down, 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 and then hammer on with downs. They come over the top. You could, you could do that. Uh, the mechanisms here, now, if you've not checked out Troy Grady's YouTube channel, we'll put a link to either a video or his channel up here because it is fantastic. He goes into this stuff in way more depth than I'll be able to in this kind of short video. But the motion of this hand is quite important to getting things fluid. So if we're sticking to the alternate picking thing, which is what I'm doing in these examples, the following examples, uh, we need to think about what we're doing here. So if we're doing the kind of Paul Gilbert thing and our plectrum slanted this way, right, I'll, I'll exaggerate it to prove this point. So say we're going our uh, first one. Now naturally this, this is going to fall into the string on a down, isn't it? Like, that's just, that's just the natural motion that it does. So if you want to get an up from that, you're going to have to sort of jump over the string do this sort of weird motion and then do it up. Or you're going to get that thing, you're going to get kind of slop and you're not going to be able to do it. So what's the easy way to do that? Well, if the plectrum leaves the strings, and I'm exaggerating this a lot to prove a point, if it leaves the strings at this angle, uh, sorry, like that, it's naturally coming over the string and you can hit that. Right? Obviously it doesn't have to be as over the top as that, but basically what this means is if you play the first two notes with your hand kind of your player from slanted this way, on this last note what you want to do, and this is what he would uh, try to call forearm rotation, you kind of move the pick more like this, and I'm, it's really, I am rotating my forearm to change the angle of the pick, so. And what this does is it means I've switched to this position and I can now hit the string. So I'll do it with an exaggerated motion. Uh, and hopefully less sloppy this time. And you'll notice when I'm hitting this, 
<laughs> I'm rotating my forearm back to how it was. So I'll do that with a kind of less exaggerated motion, the sort of thing I would do. And if you watch Paul, Gil uh, Paul Gilbert videos, it'd help if I could say his name properly, wouldn't it? Uh, you will notice his wrist doing this kind of little thing. And that's what it is. So if that didn't make sense to you, uh, maybe go back and like, listen to it again. If not, and you're more interested in it, Troy Grady's thing is, is absolutely fantastic. I cannot recommend it enough if you want to really work on your technique and the sort of mechanics behind it. Now it's not totally essential that you get this down, it's just worthwhile bearing in the back of your mind as you crack on with the rest of the examples. So applying that to this first example, it's just this for the full bar. <laughs> Get that slow and uh, you know speed it up as you can. On a side note, I might sound more muffled and nasally than usual. Uh, <laughs> my voice might also sound a bit lower because I got cold just now. So in my defence, when any slop happens, it's because I'm ill and can't move my fingers properly. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. So the next one here, what I'm going to do is the same idea. We're using the same technique all the way through here. I'm just going to use it going up the scale. All these examples will be in G major as well, so you can use them in a G major E minor context. So exactly the same start as before. Then I'm moving up the scale, so I'm going to go three, five, seven, picking these ones, look out on the next string, moving up the shape. At this point, I'm not going to say which notes I'm playing because the tabs there, and my fingers are here, so you can probably see it between them. So we've got this next, picking on the E string, look out on the A, up to the next shape, and the next one. So to recap that first bar, we go... Next bar, we're just carrying on from uh, where we left off. In fact, I think I even went to the next bar by mistake. Though. Sorry about that. So the next bar starts on the 8, 10, 12 on the E. Then we go to the 9, 10, 12. Look out, up the next shape. The next one. And the next one again. So I'll play that for my start. And I'll do it with a bit more pan muting on the A string. This next example is designed to follow on from the last one, but it's also good to be able to do it in isolation. Uh, so let's have a look at it. Rather than going up and down the fretboard, we're going to be going across. We're starting off where we left off up here at the 14th fret. So we've got 14, 15, 17 on the E. Picking these notes. Legato on the A. Same shape. Then we're going to pick these notes. Do legato on the D, 14, 16, 17. Back down to the A, and we're going to repeat that little phrase we just did. Picking on the A, look out on the D. Then what we're going to do is pick these notes uh, on the D, look out the same shape on the G, and repeat that little phrase. Now we're you're probably getting the hang of this, what sort of system I'm using here. So we're going to use the D, the G string, sorry, we're going to pick the notes, and then we're going to look out on the B, and we're going to go 15 to 17, 19. Back down to the G as before. And the legato again on the B. Then we're going to pick the B this time. And legato on the E. Just using the same, the same shape, that uh, 15, 17, 19. So from the start, I'll try and play quite slowly again. Okay, so we've gone this way, we've gone that way, what else can we do? Well, we combine them. Let's go diagonally. So I'm starting off where we did with our very first lick. We've got the 2 3 5 on the low E. Look out of the A string, same shape. Pick those notes again. And I'm going to jump up to 4 5 7 on the D and look out of those. Pick them. Same shape on the G string, the 4 5 7. Look out. Pick them. Jump up to a 7, 8, 10 on the B, legato, then pick them. Exactly the same shape on the E string, and here we'd be legato, and then we're going to pick them, and then do a bend, just to finish it off. So play that through in its entirety. It's just the same shape, uh, moved uh, kind of parallel and then bumped up. So we're going...
I'm just putting the bend in to show how you could kind of use it in a more uh, realistic or real life music context. So what I'm doing here also is worth mentioning is a kind of trick of playing in octaves. So you'll notice this shape just happens, this... That just happens across. And I'm just playing in octaves. So we've got this shape here, starting on the F sharp. And it just goes up to the next F sharp. And then to the next one again. And then ending, as I said, on the... On a bend. So well, what else can we do? Loads of stuff. This video is just very much scratching the surface, but well, let's try it on a different set of strings. So let's try it on the D and the G strings. So I'm going to go 2, 4, 5, pick those. Legato, same shape on the G. Up to the 4, 5, 7 on the D. Same shape on the G, but legato. Then we got a uh, 5, 7, 9 picked. And then legato that on the G. Then we get, we have to change things a wee bit here, so we go uh, 7, 9, 10 on the D, and then you just move the 10 up to 11 on the G. Uh, next shape, it's so that one, then this one, and then up again, then the final one. So I'll play that slowly from the start. speed. Pretty sloppy, but I've got a cold, remember? got a cold, that's why. Okay, okay, so we played this way, we played that way, we played diagonally. What else can we do? That's it. No, loads of stuff we can do, so we're going to do string skipping. I'm going to go uh, 3, 5, 7 on the low string. Pick that, and then the legato is going to be 4, 5, 7 on the D. And we're going to use this idea and just move it up this way. Uh, so we go... Then we're going to go for this 578. Legato, the 7, uh, 579. Next shape here. Picking on the E string, legato on the D. Again, picking on the E string, legato on the D. So that first bar. Uh, next one, we got 10, 12, 14 on the E. Sorry, those will be picked. Then legato on the D, same same shape. Same shape on the A here. What I'm doing is I've played this way, and I'm going to play this way for the second half of the lick. So I'm picking these, the 10, 12, 14. Legato, 11, 12, 14 on the G. Picking the 10, 12, 14 on the D. Up to the B for 12, 13, 15. Picking the G, same shape as the B there, but just uh, down a fourth, so 11, 12, uh, 14. And then 12, 14, 15 to finish off. Would be legato. Uh, so that second half there. Yeah, just as a little uh, extra bit there, if you tap on the 22nd fret at the end of that lick, it's going to sound quite cool. So let's go from the very start. And as a kind of side note here, you don't have to play them all once, you know, if you're playing this in a kind of a, a real life context or writing a solo or whatever, you could play it, you know, a couple of times. So we could go... And you don't have to just go one to the other, you could jump about. And say you go up to here and there's something you particularly like, like for me, for example, I find... I think that's a pretty cool sound, so you could stick on that for quite a while as well. You could play that like four or eight times or something. Go cool. here's another string skipping example, and I'm just going to play straight across the fretboard here. So we're going to go starting in the same one, same position as we did to the three, five, seven. Obviously, those are the pick notes. Legato on the four, five, seven on the D. And we've got the same shape, and we're just bumping it down a string set. Sorry. And then we've got uh, going to the four, five, seven on the D, jumping to the five, seven, eight on the B, and then the same shape, same jump from the G uh, to the E, so four, five, seven on the G, five, seven, eight on the E. So that one from the start. Okay, so there's other places we can take this as well. I'm going to look at switching it round, so I'm starting on the upstroke and going to the down. And I'm also going to use pull-offs instead of hammer-ons. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to do an upstroke and a pull-off. So we have a 8 down to 7, 
down to 5, then pick the 8, 7, 5 on the next string. So this is exactly the same technique. So say we'd gone, what we were doing before was pick, hammer on. So the picking mechanism is exactly the same. So what would that be? Reverse would be. But instead of hammering on and pulling off, I'm picking the next string. So you're starting on the legato, then going to the picking. And I'm just going to take this up as we did before. So, you know, obviously you can take this diagonally, you can take it up and down and all sideways, all sorts of manner of things, but the one we're doing here is just going to go straight up. So then we get legato on the 10 8, 7 picking the same uh, frets on the B, then 12 8 10 on the E, picking the same frets again on the B, then we get the 14 12 down to the 10 legato on the E, then we have to change it a bit, so we get 13 12 10 on the B, then 15, 14, 12 on the E, 15, 13, 12 on the B, and then up to 17, 15, 14 legato on the E, then 17, 15, 13 on the B picked, and then I'm just going slide down from the 19 because that's quite a, a Gilbertian thing to do. If you could do a little rake into that as well, that'll make it a bit cooler. But, oops. <laughs> if you hit the note, it would help. Yeah. Uh, so I'll do that from the start slowly. Uh, even got the rake that time, so <laughs> bonus. Cool, as always, hopefully this video has been useful for you guys and you can kind of see how you can take this one kind of simple idea of playing three notes and then doing a bit of legato to make it sound kind of bigger than it is. It gives you more time to think about what you're doing as well if you're playing a kind of fast passage or something. It sounds pretty cool and it's good to be able to mix them up. Your legato won't get weak if you're concentrating too much on just picking it, you know. As usual, if you enjoyed this or you got something from it, please feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe if you feel so inclined. It's very much appreciated. Cheers, guys.